The North. Known for its industry, hard-working and innovative people. We are the engineers of the past and always look for solutions for the future. Our Creative North wants to celebrate that and show the world what we can do. Hi there and welcome to another edition of our Creative North. My name's James Ellis and we've got a fantastic episode this week. We sent a young pioneer, James Stringer, along to North Tyneside Steel Band where he gets to do a bit of drumming. And our business of the week is Nosebleed Interactive, a games company based right in the centre of Newcastle. But first up, let's go to North Tyneside. So it's back to our feature of the week where we sent young James Stringer along to the North Tyneside Steel Band. Hello, I'm James Stringer. I'm here today uh, with the North Tyneside Steel Band. Um, I do like a lot of music from different origins. No, I haven't done this before, so um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really good opportunity. Hello, I'm James. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Um, I'm Caitlin, and I'm a player in the band, um, and I also teach in schools. Right, okay, so the song's called Ping Pong. There's like three, four parts to it, but it's all based around the same same notes, same chords. So the first part is like drops, which includes the whole band going through three chords. The second bit builds it up by rolling. And then you start with a typical rhythm that we would usually play. And then that builds up the song, builds up the song until you get to the solo bit, which starts with backline who play more of the chords. And they start off and then you build in the seconds, which is the solo bit that I taught you. Mm -hmm. To then build it up even more by adding more into the solo and then including the tenors, and then it completely drops again. Yep. To start with the tenors and work backwards. And then the end of the song finishes at the end of that solo with the three drops on the end. It's like the basis of the song. It's a Caribbean song, so. Is it? Yeah. We, a lot of the stuff we play is from the Caribbean. Yeah. We do play like pop songs, like well-known songs that people will know, but. It's always nice to play something made for the steel pan. Yeah. Is this is this like rubber? Does, yeah. Does it matter what you play with or not? Yeah. Does it? It does. Right. Yeah. Because if you don't play with rubber, it ends up like not sounding great and it damages the pans because they're oh, really right. easily damaged. Right. Because to tune them, you have to hit them with a the hammer. Mhm. Mm so if you like play with something a lot harder, it like knocks them out of tune. Right. So playing with rubber obviously keeps the sound. They do eventually go out of tune, which is a shame, but. You have to just keep retuning them every time. Right. Yeah. They last a very long time in there. As long as you play with normal sticks and mm -hmm. like don't hit them too hard and like don't like drop them all the time. Is there any other sticks that you play with to make a different tune or is it just like the um, the Well, rubber? depending on what pan. And right. like, they are all just the same, the wood, the rubber on the top, but mm -hmm. like the bass which has got like six giant like oil drums. Mm -hmm. I have like a really big stick and then the guitars have like a slightly smaller one and then they get like smaller and smaller and the smaller the pan is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so, it's always the same with the rubber on the top end. So James is about to have a go at these lovely steel drums. So today we're going to teach you a song called Ping Pong. So I'll go over it now with you, learn all the parts of the song, and then later on we'll probably play it as a whole band so you can like feel what it's like to play as a massive band. So if you want to right. grab these pans and we'll start with it. So. First bass is three chords. Mm -hmm. So you got D and B flat, then A flat and C, and then E flat and G. So it's gonna be like flat's gonna be right. first. Yeah, yeah. So four times is repeating itself, yeah? Yeah. Right. So you wanna try going from just the normal hits to the rolls and I'll play with you. Yeah, yeah. So just start with the Right. So after four, so one, two, three, four. Bye. 
इस बेस like the fourth time at the very end. So the solo is the guitars who are behind us play four times okay. and then we start to add in the and the, the pen. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we start to add that in at the end of each of yeah. like the their solo bit. And then after four times of doing that we do the like when we're all together and then after that the tenors we all stop and the tenors who are in front usually play twice through their bit and then we come back in with the James is going to have a chat with one of the players of the band, Kieran. My name's Kieran and I'm a player within the Steel Band. So um, how did the idea of Steel Drums come about? Where did it first start off? Well, Steel Drums come from an island in the Caribbean called Trinidad and Tobago. It's really two separate islands, but they're put together as one. And it started off as long big sticks of bamboo cane. It was called Tambu Bamboo. And it was so people could communicate without speaking. It was passed different messages on, so they'd have different lengths of cane and it'd make a different sound. Just like on the pan, how there's different notes and they're different sizes, so they make a different sound. Um, so how would I get into Steel Drums? How would I get into Steel Drum if I was to... Um... Well, in the northeast, there's lots of different ways you could get into steel drums. You could contact the band directly, so you could go onto the North Tyneside Steel Band Facebook page, Twitter, YouTube channel, or even our website, mm -hmm. and just drop us an email. Or we've even got a form to fill out and many numbers right. to call, and someone will sort you out there. Alternatively, you can talk to the North Tyneside Music Education Hub, and that's based here at the Langdale Centre, and they can put you in contact with a number of bands around the northeast, all of which will be happy to take any new starter or experienced panner. And how long does it take approximately until you you join the band and you start going out on kind of trips and stuff like that? Well, once you first join our band, you would go into the training band if you're a new starter. And the training band perform regularly at band events, so at like our annual group meeting and our performances. The training band are very popular there. And occasionally they come out on gigs with us as well to high profile ones like Gibside Hall. Mm -hmm. Then once you've been in the training band for a little while and you get into grips with the music and the pans and how it play, you move into our junior performance band. And once you're in that band and you know a good piece of the set, you start coming out on most gigs that we do. So really it ranges on your ability so it can take anywhere from half a year up until however long until you feel comfortable to come and perform with us. Oh, let's get that Caribbean spirit. This has to be the only time me drinking pina coladas at work is appropriate. Um, I'm feeling really good about the final performance. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, uh, being among all the other people, all the other drummers. It should be good, um, seeing if the, uh, the, the tutorials and the, um, has really paid off. So I'm really looking forward to it. just finished playing with the band and um, 
it was a really good experience. Being as a team and uh, working as a team to create um, a piece of music was really good, um, really good experience. I would recommend it to anyone. Um, yeah, I, just, I would do it again, definitely. So it looked like James had a fantastic time with the North Tyneside Steel Band and a big thanks for letting the Creative North crew in. After the break, we've got our business of the week, which is Nosebleed Interactive, and they've got a new game, which is called Vostok. So see you after the break. Nosebleed Interactive are a games company based right here in the centre of Newcastle. I'm Kieran Desch and I'm the lead 3D artist. I'm uh, Andreas Fernigal, I run Nosebleed Interactive. We're a video game developer, so we make PlayStation games, Xbox games, Wii games like Nintendo, like stuff for PC, the whole shebang essentially. Um, we started kind of three years ago when I was made redundant. Well, the company I was working for up in Scotland closed their doors, uh, and I wanted to move back down to Newcastle because it's kind of where I'd I'd spent more time in Newcastle than anywhere else. It's kind of my spiritual home, let's say. Um, wanted to be back here and I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a go, see whether I can set my own thing up. Um, our first game, The Hungry Horde, uh, was released by Sony, so our first contract, our first big contract was with Sony, which was really great for us because essentially it put us on the map to a certain extent. Releasing the first game we did was pretty good. It's, it's weird seeing other people and hearing feedback of what you've done. And that's like a it's kind of a zombie game where you play as the zombies. Every time you kill a human, they join your horde. It's all quite sort of tongue-in-cheek and lots of mini-games and that sort of stuff. But that, that released last November on PlayStation Plus, which is Sony's kind of Netflix-esque sort of subscription service. And it's done really well, and obviously it's put us in a position to be able to kind of do our own thing now. So that's it's been really good. So the journey's been a bit of a funny one. So I started out essentially on the doll, um, been made redundant, pretty much penniless. Um, managed to scrounge and scrape some money together and get some credit cards and call in a few favours from people I'd worked with previously and put together like a, a pitch for The Hungry Horde, the, the zombie game, um, which people seem to quite like. So we got a bit of prototype funding for that. I managed to get together a small team of people, including Kieran, um, and put together a, well, we built our own game engine for it and all that sort of stuff for, for mobile. Um, and took it to Sony because I thought, you know what, well, well let's, ha let's aim high if, you know, what, what's the worst that could happen? Um, and fortunately for us, the very first pitch I ever did to Sony, we got funding for, and that kind of saw us through for about, two, well, two and a half years because we moved platform from mobile to PlayStation Vita, so we changed engines and all that sort of stuff, techie, boring stuff. Um, but yeah, so we essentially kind of created that game and that's put us on the map to a certain extent because obviously working with Sony is huge kudos, you know, working on PlayStation is big but then working on a game that they're publishing is like a huge thing. So we've had quite a lot of work off the back of that, you know, just bits of work for hire. We're doing like a mobile game, for, like a tablet game for another company in Newcastle and obviously we're doing our own thing across multiple platforms now. So usually 2D concepting, just modelling in general, environments, characters, props, pretty much everything, and then all the way through to implementation to games and game design as well, level design, stuff like that. So pretty much the whole creative side of games. Although we don't particularly talk about it that much, you know, we have regular meetups of, of game developers, you know, going out for drinks and stuff like that, so there's a little bit more collaboration, or at least there's a bit more opportunity for it. You know, people stick together a little bit more, and I think spatially, because you know, Newcastle's not the biggest city, you know, it's easy to get from one person's office to another. So if someone says, oh, have you got time for a quick meeting? It's a five minute kind of, yeah, yeah, I'll just come around to your office and see what you're up to or whatever, rather than, you know, have to schedule this and in three hours time I can get the underground and it takes me, you know, however long. So after I finished university, the next biggest city close to where I was was Newcastle. I didn't expect to get where I am so fast but I think the North East is a up and coming creative hub anyway so there's a lot of people that are moving here to be 
more in their industry. But I think it's a really good creative kind of hub, for, especially for games. I mean, we've got ourselves, we've got about four other bigger companies than us, and then lots of little ones, and then service providers for. I mean, there's there's, there's Atom Hawk in the just over the water and gateshead and they do stuff they've done stuff for the Thor movies like well all of the Marvel movies essentially lots of video games um, so the, there's a creative hub of games industry in the northeast. it's just we don't really talk about it as much as we probably ought to do so the game that we're working on at the moment which is across pretty much all platforms it's like a twin stick shooter like arcade action packed kind of space shooter on one hand with lots of upgrades lots of kind of cartoony silliness and then um, you can kind of switch to another mode or with, well within the game there's a sort of a different feeling where you could literally just put the game down and I could be having this interview and it would be playing itself and ten minutes later or you know when the boss isn't watching or whatever I mean I'm the boss so it's fine but um, you know you can pick it back up and be like oh haven't I done well so that's kind of what we're what we're trying to do with well we've not got a name for it yet but we're thinking Vostok Inc at the moment so look out for it I waste my days where I So Nosebleed Interactive are a fantastic example of the great work that we're doing up here in the north and a big thanks for letting us in. Now last time we saw James he just finished his drumming performance but we're going to meet some of the young members of the North Tyneside Steel Band. And a recap, we sent young James Stringer along to North Tyneside Steel Band. My name is Kieran and I'm a player within the Steel Band. I've been in the band for 11 years now. When I was in middle school our music teacher was very into steel pans and he was the one that got me into steel pans and really encouraged the musical development throughout the whole school and with individual pupils. So he really pushed me into the steel pan that's really why I started. As the steel band will get booked for lots of different events, we'll play anything from weddings to summer fairs and school fundraisers, charity fundraisers or even just busking out in the street as well. I'm Caitlin and I'm a player in the band um, and I also teach in schools. My middle school offered steel pans from year five, so I thought it would be a good idea to join it. Something new, and then after a year of playing in the school band, I was shown North Tyneside Steel Band, so I joined there and played in both my school for four years, and then continued in North Tyneside Steel Band. It's a hobby, but it has a lot to do with my life, and I have to put a lot of effort into it and a lot of time, but I do still love it. With being a young leader and teaching in the schools, you need your own music. So I have to sit and obviously think of the song that I want to teach and arrange it, but it doesn't have to be perfect to the way the song is sung or how it is wrote. So I have my own twist on how I arrange the song myself. A lot of effort needs to go into it, but to pass on something that I got when I was younger is it's a really nice opportunity. My name is Grace Paul and I'm Joint Musical Director of North Tyneside Steel Band. I started playing the steel pans after um, seeing people play it at middle school and realising how energetic the music was and how much of a different hobby it was compared to other things. Um, so I joined 12 years ago and haven't left. The best moment um, in band for me was playing at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, such a big thing to do and a lot of people say, wow, you've played at the Royal Albert Hall, what an experience. It definitely was one of my top life experiences. The band was set up 25 years ago and as a new band within the North East, Steel Pan was um, mostly seen in London and our band brought Steel Pan to the North East and since 25 years of starting the Steel Band, um, Steel Pan has grown throughout to have numerous bands looking in the 20s, 30s within schools as well as community bands like us. Coming up we'll have a lot of Christmas gigs um, arrivals of Santa Claus in a garden centre. Um, our main thing we're working towards at the moment is our Playhouse gig, which is in February, which is going to be a night with just us um, performing for an audience. My creativity for the band comes from seeing the audience enjoying our music, seeing them react to our playing and how it can make them happy and see them clapping along and just enjoying themselves. Hi, I'm Jenny Chan, I'm 17 and I've been playing in North Tyneside for about seven years. I'm Emma, I'm 16, I've been playing for about eight years. I joined after I played for four years at my middle school and I just love all the music. I played after sort of like a taster session at the stage and really enjoyed it. So you can make your song as hard or as easy as you want it to be. Yeah. So depending on the player's ability we can change it and make it harder or easier. To the wonderful James Ellis who's going to finish us off.
So that's another fantastic episode of Our Creative North, all done and dusted with. And a big thanks to James Stringer, Nosebleed Interactive, and the North Tyneside Steel Band. And we've got a new website up, which the link is below. If you're a freelancer, an artist, a young person, or a business who just wants to find out about what's going on in your region, then please register your details right now. And I will see you next week.